Hello everyone. So again, I've been given the nudge by my guide team to sit down and make a little video just to talk about some of the energies that we might be experiencing at the moment. It's been a little while since I've made a video, a video here. Uh, I've been away working at some retreats and festivals and it's been a really busy time and I'm sure uh, everyone can agree with me when I say that the first thing that we're being made aware of is time. A lot of time distortion, a sense that time is really speeding up at the moment and I wanted to talk a little bit about how we as alchemists and light workers can actually manipulate time for our own benefit and I've spoken about this in previous videos as well but one of the things that I like to do if I have a lot on my plate and a lot to do and I feel like I don't have enough time to do it in is that I consciously slow time down and how I do that is I kind of slow myself down I get into a bit of a state where I just come into stillness and I allow myself to become one with everything become one with time it's as though you are time and if you were time itself what it would what would it feel like to be time and if you wanted to slow down as time, what would that feel like in your body? So I kind of feel a slowing down of energy, a slowing down of movement, a slowing down even of my speech. And then let myself just become time, you know, become time itself and slow down, breathe. When we're in a, a really fast paced experience of the feeling of running out of time, we speed things up actually. If we become more frantic, if we're like, oh my God, I've got to get things done and we become really, we can actually speed up time by speeding up the energy around us and, and we, we kind of make things become a little bit more frantic and frenetic. So if you can slow down, then time can slow down around you. The energy will slow down around you and it's coming into trust as well. I also ask my higher self, higher self, please slow down time, make this next hour feel like three so that I get everything done that I need to do. And I swear to God it works. It's something I've been doing for years and years and years. You can also call on the angels of time. You can call on old father time, the consciousness of old father time itself and my lights are flickering as usual as when I get a yes. Old Father Time is very present with us here today. Hi, Old Father Time. Thank you for your presence. Um, so yeah, slowing time down because when we feel like we're running out of time, whether that's a small incremental period of time, like I said, for an hour when you've got to get something done, or whether there's something you want to achieve in your life, in this time frame of your lifespan, and you feel like time is running away with you or you don't have enough time to do anything. Um, you know, they talk about it a lot in terms of a fertility journey. Oh, come on, the clock's ticking. You know, we're seeing older and older mothers <laughs> these days. I'm seeing incredible things to do with pregnancy. And and I talked a little bit about this with uh, Pam Gregory in her, inter in her interview with me. And um, time, as we know it, is sort of starting to become a bit obsolete. We're becoming more aware of our holographic nature. We know that, for example, past lives are not in the past. There are future, parallel, all kinds of timelines playing out. And it's all a multidimensional, spherical hologram. And so we can have access to these other aspects of ourselves and our other lifetimes and our other experiences. And many of you watching this channel will have had plenty of those experiences. So I know that I'm preaching to the converted here. But as we become more aware of our multidimensional nature, we're just in the eternal now. And time really does become obsolete, which also means that we can use it to our advantage. We can time travel. We can alter our timelines. We can achieve more in a shorter space of time. And we can manifest much, much quicker when time becomes obsolete. I'm also finding that um, the tangible is becoming more intangible. I kind of feel the energy of creation a little bit like Play-Doh sometimes. It kind of feels like reality is more malleable. The things that we want to dream into our reality are becoming more available to us as we shift our belief programs and our belief systems. Um, I hadn't had this on the list to talk about, but my guides are just saying, you know, remind everybody that nothing at all 
sits outside of the divine and nothing at all sits outside of the sacred. And what I mean by that is that our human belief systems are so just embedded and so dense and we have so many of these um, kind of entangled beliefs and systems and the lens that we look at the world through can really color our reality. So what they're kind of saying is come out of judgment of yourself and others and let people live in the way that they want to live as long as they're bringing harm to none. Um, also the reminder that everything we see in our outer world is either a reflection or a, a finger pointing at something in our inner world. So one of the things that this is making me think of is addictions. You know, so many people on this planet have addictions and you know, if, you've, if you've ever been someone who's battled with an addiction, really hold yourself in compassion because people who are observing someone with an addiction might think, oh, why don't they just stop that? Or why don't they just give that away? Or why don't they, you know, why don't they get control of themselves? It's really easier said than done a lot of the time and to disentangle from an addiction program takes a lot longer than many people assume although that's becoming even easier these days as we flip our mindset. So, for example, if I if I work with a client who has a tobacco addiction or cigarette addiction, smoking addiction, the first thing I will suggest is that instead of really trying to suppress the addiction and beating themselves up about it and being really mean to themselves about it, that they start to bless the sacred tobacco plant that they are smoking. And if they start to bless the thing that they are doing and seeing it as a way to self-soothe and a way to self-fulfill self and they start to hold gratitude for it, then it starts to feel less like a kind of dirty little secret and something bad and wrong that they should be telling themselves off for. And it starts to then work its way out of their system because it works with them. So that phrase, what we resist persists. If you're trying to suppress something, then it's going to make itself even more present. So if you're somebody who's grappling with addiction, try to bless whatever it is you're addicted to. I mean, people can be addicted to substances. People can be addicted to love and sex. People can be addicted to shopping, all kinds of things. But if, you know, say you have a shopping addiction, start to bless the things that you've purchased as, if it's clothing, bless it as sacred garments, bless your sacred trinkets and tools. And the more that you hold gratitude for it, the more that you, you will start to ease yourself of those feelings of guilt uh, and inadequacy that often comes with addiction. So everything again in this universe is sacred. Everything around us is a blessing. It's a living universe. And anything can be cleansed of any negative and limiting blueprint. So um, some people have beliefs around things like alcohol and some people believe that to do spiritual work you have to stop drinking all alcohol or not eat meat or not drink coffee. Um, I am someone who lives very much in balance and um, not that it's anyone's business how I live choose to live my life but I would like to say that as a as a channel and an alchemist um, I still eat meat from time to time I always bless my food and I bless the soul and I hold gratitude I have the odd glass of wine I actually find a glass of red wine quite grounding at the end of the week uh, and I'm very well aware, again, the guides are reminding me that actually beer was created by goddess priestesses <laughs> originally, I think is the story. Um, and also I, I, I drink coffee. I actually find coffee quite grounding. But my experience of any of this is not to go into too harsh a judgment of yourself and also to acknowledge that every single person is unique and individual on this planet and we all have different needs and wants and desires and I think something that's kind of sparked this conversation is that I recently had a client email me about my channeling course and she said, look, I've tried doing channeling courses before and every channeling teacher says to me, you have to give up meat, you have to become vegan, you have to not drink coffee, you have to purify your diet and all these different things. And 
she said, am I going to have to do that? And I said, absolutely not. You're not going to have to do that. I wouldn't be drinking alcohol and doing spiritual work, obviously. That would be a no-no. You want to keep your energy field pure when you're meditating. I wouldn't recommend drinking booze or, you know, or getting high or anything like that if you're going to be channeling or doing spiritual work. We do it within a very safe container and we go through very strict protocols. But I would never tell somebody that in order to be spiritual, you have to give up eating something or drinking something or, you know, give up the, the little joys that you have in your life. And I do believe that everything in moderation, everything in balance, if you feel that you're out of balance with something, if you feel like you have an alcohol addiction, for example, then you'll need to go away and work on that. But the odd glass of red wine or something with a dinner or a dinner party is something that we do to celebrate things and I think a lot of the time it's our belief systems and our perceptions that really do create our reality so I feel like moderation and balance is essential also the other thing that guides are saying to me at the moment is we are as a humanity really in deep need of celebration and the celebration of our uniqueness is one of those things that we are really starting to come into celebration of. As a, as a teacher and a facilitator, I never go, I never tell anyone how they should be living. I don't give people orders and I certainly don't prescribe to following any one set of rules. I think that life is a pick your own adventure and I think we must take what resonates with us and leave the rest behind. So I think if somebody is trying to dictate to you how to live, I would be questioning, it's 1414 on my clock as I record this, I would be questioning uh, any teacher that tried to dictate to me how my spiritual journey should look or how I should be in this world. I think that we have to be very mindful of it being in integrity is one thing, but if we tip over into righteousness or righteous judgment, then we're we're kind of losing the point of why we do this work. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about, and, you know, I'm not saying any of this, by the way, to offend anybody. I live and let live and, and anyone, um, and I do believe that everyone should be free to live as they choose so long as they're bringing harm to none. And like I said, we have strict parameters around channeling. My channeling courses are, are in a very clean environment. Uh, we won't be drinking while channeling. Um, but I don't believe that you have to abstain throughout your whole life in order to do that work. Um, some of the other themes coming up at the moment is the fracturing of the fairy tale or the dissolving of all glamours and illusions. And this is something that's obviously been going on for quite some time during this ascension process. It's like our, our window into the world is being polished up. And as we integrate and heal some of these timelines, we're actually seeing levels of truth here on planet Earth that may not wash with us. As our cognitive dissonance, shall we say, starts to wear off and our belief in the illusion of like it's all skip through the tulips wonderful and the people in charge have our best interests at heart. Some of them do, not all of them do, I'm sure. Um, we're really seeing a reality, a level of reality that we may, some, some bits we may love, some bits we may be like, wow, this is heaven on earth. I'm definitely seeing glimpses of that. Incredible connections with like-minded souls. I'm also seeing some stuff that can make me a little bit uncomfortable. And it's not so much seeing this, by the way. There's more a feeling of this. It's like we're coming down to earth. We're landing on earth. We're really getting grounded here. The real, real boots on the ground stuff is making itself known. And we're going to feel that, first of all, through our emotional body because we are sentient beings first and foremost. So you might be having at the moment, especially as we've come through that big full moon, what I'm sensing is this feeling of being absolutely fed up, can't be bothered, don't want to push ahead. There's a real purging going on. Um, and it's almost like reality bites, you know. It's like, oh, God, if this is real life and, you know, the fantasy's worn off, the glamour's worn off, you know, the bits, maybe the addictions, maybe the things that we used to use to self-soothe aren't quite cutting it anymore and aren't quite fulfilling us in the way they were. 
And, you know, I've talked about this before, huge relationship shifts are going on on this planet. Relationships in terms of friendship changes, lots of relationships breaking down, people walking out of marriages because they've realized, wow, you know, that, that, that's not for me. I think the pandemic with a lot of people having to live together and really see each other has um, highlighted perhaps where there is an incompatibility with a lot of people. Um, but this glamour wearing off is having, uh, I think, a bigger impact on us than we know because it's going to hit our emotional body first. We're going to start by feeling that something isn't quite right or we may just feel, I don't feel happy and I don't know why. That's usually where we will reach for something to self-soothe. So a deep sadness, a deep inner sadness in humanity is rising to the surface. And what my guides say to me is this is really the sadness of separation. Like where have we separated from our true selves, our true core desires, our true core wishes and needs, our divinity itself, where have we repressed or squashed parts of ourselves so that we can fit into somebody else's narrative of what life should look like for us. And we have so many different boxes that we've tried to fit ourselves into, not least of all stereotypes um, to do with, you know, being a woman. Like, I thought, what does it mean to be a woman? Oh, you've got to get married, have a baby and look after everybody. And, you know, and, and then most women, when Mother's Day comes around, here you go, happy Mother's Day, here's a card but you're knackered from spinning all the plates. And I love that quote in the Barbie movie. If anyone's seen it, I, I did really like the Barbie movie. I, you know, I, I'm almost embarrassed to say that. I didn't think it was going to be that great. I thought it would be a bit of fluff, but I actually really, really enjoyed it. So whatever you believe about the Barbie movie and any agendas, I'm not going down rabbit holes, but I, I think it had a positive message. And I am a fan of Margot Robbie. She's a fellow Aussie. Um, so where we've been reaching for, you know, the the proverbial soother, whether that be, you know, a drink or going shopping or having a spa day or going dancing or whatever it is that you would use to self-soothe or, and some of that is very healing by the way, but um, where we've been blinkering ourselves because it's been too hard to see the reality of what's actually happening here. We're going through a massive transition, a massive birth canal. There's no secret about that. But I think that there are more subtle nuances at work in this than we've even been aware of. One of these things is what the guides are showing me is the illusion that our soul energy has somehow become scattered or fractured and that we need to piece ourselves back together, which almost renders healing redundant because that in itself is an illusion. So, But I see healing as an alchemy where... We're finding the parts of ourselves that are holding limiting beliefs and that are living by those limiting beliefs. We're correcting those limiting beliefs to a higher level of truth and then we're seeing reality for what it is. So where we felt ourselves as being scattered or fractured, we're then able to see the truth of that, which is that we're always whole. We've always been whole. I am of the belief that there was never a fall from grace as such. It was just a belief system. And we've never been separated from our divinity. And we were not born sinners and need to prove ourselves pure. We were born pure and innocent. We were born whole. And we're needing to remember that. And that's all that's happening here is a remembrance, a greater remembrance that we are already divine. We are human divine. And really we're, we're letting go of the limiting belief programs, letting go of the limiting um, you know, just programming insights, whatever we've been taught or told that has kind of smoked up that window and glazed over that truth and we're polishing ourselves clean so that we can see the truth of who we are and then we're re-engaging with this vast uh, divine community of angelic beings, star beings, elementals, fairies, unicorns, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle of the whole family of light and love that is available to us here and once we start to know ourselves as more whole, we're then able to celebrate our uniqueness within that wholeness. So becoming whole and living in unity, love, consciousness is not about living in the same way that everybody else does. It's not about herding everybody together like cattle and having one rule or one band-aid solution or one remedy for the all. 
And this is why I really love holistic healing practices and medicines like homeopathy, naturopathy, herbalism, um, energy healing, any way that you can have healing that is bespoke to you. I really love functional medicine because it really seems to bridge the world of energy work, acupuncture, the complementary therapies with modern day medicine. And I really feel this is the way that medicine and science is going to start going. We need to bridge the world. I really wrote about it a little bit about it in my, my book, Archangel Alchemy Healing. There's a lot of science in that book that really bridges the world of spirituality and the scientific to show that all of the spiritual side of things is backed up by science and mathematics. And then also in Water Alchemy Oracle, there's quite a bit of science as well, a science about the consciousness and how water represents our greater consciousness. And on that note, I actually have some a little example of something to show you about what is happening in the physical, tangible world as the glamour wears off and as things become more obvious to us. So obviously, I, um, I've i recently talked a fair bit about water and, um, you know, I have questions about water. You know, I've often asked questions like why in order to get clean water do we now need to buy bottled water when water is a god-given gift that, that we should have access to clean water um why do we need all the chemicals in the water that we have why has our water been uh, filled so full of toxins um who owns the water and what are they doing with it you know what are we actually drinking when we drink bottled water what is encoded into it um, and again, without going down rabbit holes, I talked about the fact, which many people know, that Evian spelt backwards is naive. Water is very encodable. Um, and when we look at the work of Masaru Emoto and recently Veda Austin's work, we know that water is a living being in its own right and it can be imprinted with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and emotions. And it's trying to communicate to us all the time. Recently, though, I had a bit of a an interesting experience. I went on holiday to Malta with my husband and we bought some bottled water to drink while we were there. And I had this bottle of water and I'm going to show it to you. And normally a bottle of, of water that looks like this will say natural spring water on it. And um, and it all looks good, like it says crystal, crystal, hmm, sounds like champagne. Um, and even the, bo the bottle says 50% recycled bottle, so that all looks good. But then up here it says fine table water, fine table water. And as I was drinking this water, having made these videos about, I have questions about what's going on with this bottled water. This is where things start to creep in. We get comfortable with something and then little changes start to creep in without us even noticing it because we've all gotten so used to drinking water like this out of a bottle like this and believing that it's pure water and that we're having pure spring water and it's clean and it's got no nasties in it. But this fine table water, which doesn't actually say mineral water on it anywhere, it says, a lightly mineralized water bottled according to EU standards. My first question is, what are the EU standards here? Because when I look in the ingredients in this water, it goes through the pH balance, the conductivity, magnesium, calcium, sodium, all the things that you might find in uh, natural spring water. But at the very bottom, it says fluoride. This to find table water contains fluoride. And I will leave that with you because what I am seeing here is now bottled water with chemicals creeping in that don't need to be there. Now, the story about fluoride being in our tap water is apparently about cleaning the tap water, is what I thought, or perhaps. The thing about uh, keeping our teeth clean, I don't know if that's part of the, the rhetoric about tap water, but presumably tap water has these chemicals in it to clean the water, um, but if we're being served bottled water, essentially that's supposed to come from natural springs and not supposed to have chemicals in it. So I'm going to leave that with you guys. I have questions about why that's happening.
why that's now creeping into bottled water. And of course, the unassuming, you, most people wouldn't even read that, wouldn't even notice it, wouldn't even be aware that there was fluoride in that. They'd be drinking that, assuming that it was spring water and fine table water written very small at the top. But, you know, 50% recycled bottle, yay, happy, environmentally friendly. <laughs> Not necessarily. Um, the fact also that water is being put in so much plastic and th that plastic ends up in the oceans just it, it, it beggars belief to me and I think we need to really come to a, a, a time and a place in our society where clean water should be made freely available to all uh, once again because as we know there's plenty of people on this planet who don't have access to adequate water or much water at all. I also get this sense Something my guides uh, have been pointing out is this belief that water is running out, that water is running out. Um, I don't actually believe that water is running out. I've been looking at all these things saying, save water, don't waste water. And I feel like this is a bit of a fear thing that's kind of being seeded into the population. We're running out of water, we're running out of water. And then, of course, years later, after that whole campaign begins, we now see water's being bottled, we're running out of water, save water, water's being bottled, the water's not clean. Well, why is the water not clean? Again, I have questions. Um, anyway, so this fracturing of the fairy tale, the crumbling of the glamour, all that glamour wearing off, the feeling of being fed up, can't be bothered, etc. All, everything feeling real and too hard, too real and too hard. But what I'm also seeing is, a lot of our old programming, our survival programming, the fight, flight, freeze, and of course fawn, and I've talked about the people pleaser program um, as part of that glamour wearing off, these are burning off. A lot of people are getting really rapid burning off of karma and karmic patterns really recently. And, it, and you'll find, many of you will find that you just cannot tolerate bad behavior towards you anymore and you cannot tolerate uh, any abuses anymore, however subtle. We're seeing through the veil, we're gonna be able to feel and see if people are lying to us or if people are saying something to you, but they're not feeling what they're saying or they're not embodying what they're saying. And this is a frequency thing. We're now really starting to operate, especially those of us who've been doing the work, we're really starting to operate on a frequency level. And you'll be able to feel it. You'll just stand in somebody's presence and you will know whether you're a vibrational match for that person or not. The conversation might be flowing, it might feel like the right topic, but something might feel a bit off. And there'll be other times where the conversation is the right topic and the feeling feels right. And the guidance here is don't ignore the feeling. Don't ignore that feeling. How often do we bury our emotions and we bury our feelings and we think, oh, I'm just being silly or I'm just being insecure. But actually, I've always said this, your feelings are a great compass. Listen to your body. The body consciousness is really getting an uplift and an upshift as the body of earth is raising her frequency. And, you know, one of our first and most important key psychic senses is our clessentience, our ability to feel clearly. So you might not be able to put a finger on why something doesn't feel right or why you don't feel comfortable around another person, but if something feels off, well, maybe it's an opportunity to have a conversation and try to bring what's hidden to light and work through it together. Or, you know, and I've been caught short doing this as well, like ignoring the feeling and sort of thinking, oh, it'll go away and it never goes away. And even more intensely now, we cannot bury things under the carpet and hope they will just go away. We need to bring things up. Talk. Communication is key. Talk about things lovingly and honor that it's okay to have differing opinions and to be on two different timelines. It's okay for people to be on two different timelines and have differing opinions. As long as you're loving and honoring each other in it, you know, not doing this kind of blame shame thing. But, you know, if something's off with someone around you, if you're feeling a bit off, it's okay to talk about it and work through it together in conversation. Um, and it's also okay to move away from a person, friendship, relationship, experience if it is no longer serving you. That is totally okay as well. And it, I, 
I'm of the belief that we, if we do everything through the through the lens of unconditional love, then absolutely nothing is wrong or bad, and everything is perfect, just as it should be. Uh, I also have a message here. There's a message coming through here for the people, the group of people that I've come to know as the world mothers. What I would term the world mothers. Um, I've met a lot of these women uh, in the last couple of years. A lot of women have come forward as clients and colleagues and friends and just in my my, my friendship circles and day-to-day -day reality. And there seems to be a bit of a phenomena happening. Something I've really noticed, and I have a feeling that this is also maybe true of men, although I've mostly seen this phenomena in women, I am also aware that there are uh, men who I would refer to as world fathers or people that I would refer to as world angels. And what I mean by these people is that when they do healing for themselves or another, their reach is actually global in terms of energy work. So if you're one of these people, you will absolutely know. I, I often get... Uh, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a client or when I'm clearing myself, my guide team will also say, now clear this for the whole planet or for whoever it's available to clear for. And that's true of a lot of people. And our reach as individuals is getting much further as we recognize that we are divine. We have access to everything, the multiverse and everything. So I always when I do a healing or I do some alchemy or I set an intention, I always ask that it be for the good of the all, for myself, but also the good of the all. And it's different to running out and thinking you've got to rescue everybody. That's overwhelming. We can't do that. We can't go out and like save the world. But when we recognize that we are the world and we recognize that we are the multiverse and that we are divine, in the same way I was talking about time earlier, if you acknowledge that all reality exists within you as well as external to you when you go within and you work on a pattern or a program and you clear it for yourself then honoring that you are part of the oneness of the all and embodying that it's all about embodying it and living it as a truth then on a level of consciousness you're able to shift that program for everybody and this is how we're all walking each other home it's not about as a human going out and let me carry that for you let me help you da, 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 da. that's beautiful work as well to help others as long as you are not exhausting yourself and um you know running yourself ragged and being drained we have to really honor our own energy field as unique individuals whilst honoring that we're part of the collective or oh, it's a bit of a, a tightrope walk and a balancing act but you'll get the nuance the minute you feel drained it's not the right energy the minute you're in the slipstream of divinity and you feel uplifted and recharged and revitalized that's the right energy and again it's all frequency and vibration and it's all intention having a really clear intention about what you mean, what you're working on, who you are, what your motives for doing something as well is really, really important. But a, a certain kind of phenomena has emerged that I have uh, experienced with specifically world mothers, incredible women who have been through the ringer, who have been brought to the brink of breaking point in their daily waking lives, and had to bounce back, had to become their own tower, had to really support themselves through something where there was no help available, where it felt felt like the whole world was turning on them, and which in many cases the whole world was turning on them because they, they were not fitting into this paradigm and the witch hunts continue behind the scenes. Um, but what I'm finding is that a lot of these women have an O negative blood group or belong to the O negative sorry the O negative or O positive blood group so it's the O blood group now what I know of the O blood group is that it's the oldest blood group on the planet and I kind of see guides show me the O for origin and these blood groups go right back to the original root races on the planet they're some of the oldest on the planet um, o negative in particular is a blood group that's known as the universal donor. So anybody can receive O negative blood. And 
Reese's negative blood also is a bit of an anomaly. Some schools of thought might say that it is a galactic, um, a galactic blood group. Again, I'll leave that up to you. Um, I kind of know bits of what my guides have told me. The O, uh, the O blood group, I think, or the O negative blood group, particularly, is also what's known as the blue bloods. And so I wonder if this was what they originally meant by kind of the original royal bloodlines that they were somehow galactically connected. I don't know. I have questions about this, but I'm just putting this out there that uh, uh, most of these world angel or world mother women are of an O blood group. And going back to my point about channeling and eating meat and all of this kind of stuff and not prescribing to any one hard and fast rule book is that if you look at um, a book that was written many, many years ago, Eat Right for Your Blood Type, O groups actually do require meat. A lot of O groups on the planet were known as the carnivores. They were people that were going right back into um, Neanderthal times. And in terms of our genetic makeup, I know, for example, I've tried to go vegetarian and I often get hypoglycemic and feel very faint and I do need to eat a little bit of red meat to help me ground and for my constitution. Um, and I know I have a, a family member, a cousin as well, who's also tried to go vegetarian and she couldn't do it either. So it, all bodies have different needs and different constitutions and different makeups. And I think that it's, uh, well, it's just an invitation to do some research for yourself, but also to give yourself permission to live by the parameters that are right for your body, your work, your energy, your system, and not feel like you have to dive in and live by somebody else's rule book. Also, I've noticed in the news and the media, there seems to be a really, um, <laughs> A bit of an extreme attempt to discombobulate everybody in terms of what's good for us and what's not. You know, one week you'll read, oh, a bit of red wine's good for the heart. The next week you'll read, red wine's bad for you. One week you'll read, oh, red meat's very good for weight loss. The next week you'll be, oh, red meat causes heart attacks. I think it's different for everybody. And these different studies and things, well, there's no hard and fast science on it because it all depends on which scientific or academic body you're living by. But I don't live by an academic or scientific body. I live by my body and what my body tells me and um, and what my, my higher self and my higher body tells me as well. But I just think that's very, very interesting. I'm also interested in the O, you know, the O for origin, the O blood group. Also the O as being the circle, the sacred circle and the shape of our globe, the globe shape. So there's something going on with these I think a lot of high vibrational souls have chosen to reincarnate back into the O blood group because it does carry a lot of um, information and DNA from those originating root races on the planet. And that's not to say that um, world mothers, world fathers, world angels, grid workers, global workers can't be of other blood groups. Um but I'm definitely seeing uh, a big trend for people with a global reach who are spiritual, who are doing this work, having an O, an o blood group. So if you're watching this and you're one of those people, it might be worth doing some of your own research on this. Um, but I, I do know I have memories going back to some of these um, very, very early lifetimes on this planet and I actually think some of those memories aren't necessarily my own, but that they've been passed down through my genetic material, my, my DNA, my blood group. And um, I have an incredible guide called Erethea who I wrote about in um, Archangel Alchemy Healing. And um, he existed on this planet. He was a, a, a giant, what we would call a giant, but he knew himself connected to everything and everyone. He was very open. They knew themselves as divine humans and they walked among angels. They walked as angels in human form on this earth. And I've had evidence, my own evidence in terms of my guidance that humanity as a race is far older than our history books would lead us to believe and all of the answers are written in our DNA, they're encoded into our DNA. So as the fantasy fractures, as the glamour wears off, 
don't be surprised, those of you who are dreamers and seers and, and mystics, don't be surprised if you do start to have flashbacks and memories or visions of other lifetimes, you know, where you walked the earth in earlier civilizations, but also we're having memories of galactic timelines. For years I've had memories of lifetimes in other dimensions. Um, but you might also find that you start to peer into some of your future timelines. And as it's a pick your own adventure, we can actually choose which timeline we want to walk. So if you see a glimpse into your future and you don't like what you see, we can actually backward engineer it to change the timeline to a higher timeline and, and make sure we're always aligned to our highest soul purpose, our highest divinity, um, and what is right for us, you know, individual and unique, but a unique facet of the whole oneness of the soul. So that's just um, a few insights that I've got. If you're feeling fed up, if you're feeling knackered, if you're feeling tired, it's because on some level, something in your life is not resonating with you energetically. Give yourself time and space to let your mind, to let your mental body catch up with your emotional, physical body. Because often our body will feel it before we know how to interpret it. So you'll see a lot of people kind of feeling really like, oh, just so tired. And I mean, we're all in recovery from the huge shifts that we're going through as a humanity Try to go easy on yourself, go easy on each other. And as I said, you know, try to follow the right course of action for you in any moment. You know, we, we have so many rules thrown upon us. Be willing to question those rules, whoever they're coming from. And um, just follow your highest truth, follow your highest guidance. There's The blinkers are literally coming off. Um, something I've also seen both in myself and loads of clients and in conversations I've had with dear friends is that a lot of the time when you're an empath or when you're, when you've been through the people pleaser program, um, you can have a resistant, you can have quite a strong resistance to being controlled or to being told what to do as you start to awaken and you start to reclaim your power. And that can lead to a bit of confusion around what you want. So a lot of the time, you know, we might find that if someone will suggest something, we know we don't want that, but we might not know what we want instead. And you reserve the right to say no and to make no, no choice until you know what choice you want to make. So I kind of see this as like red pill, blue pill in the matrix, right? What if you don't want either? <laughs> and this is where we come into that crossroads energy I've been talking about. What if it's not a crossroads? What if the choices you're being presented with, like look at elections for goodness sake, like you vote for that person or that person, but what if you don't like either of them? There's not much of a choice there, is there? So I think with some of these choices that we're asked to make, and only you will know which ones, it might be that you have a choice to to stay in a situation or leave it or you don't know which way to turn with something. It's okay to sit in stillness and refuse to budge and refuse to move until you know. So until you know, you don't know. And that is absolutely okay. You are allowed to be in a place of not knowing what you want until you know what you want. And just keep handing it over to the divine. Keep asking the divine to show you the way forward. Keep asking your higher self to show you what it is you do want and to allow that to open and give yourself permission to know what you want and who you are. And I think that um, in terms of, again, going back to time, in terms of time scale, we're in this huge turning of a big wheel and until certain things click into place, we may not know what our next steps are. Sometimes things are undecided and decisions are being made on a higher level until we really know um, what the best course of action is for us as a humanity. Also, we can't force other people into making decisions that they are not ready to make and we must respect another person's space and time and allow them, for example, to awaken at their own pace 
to choose what's best for them in any moment. And some people may not be here to go through a spiritual awakening. Some people may just be here to, you know, hold an anchor point for this great shift that we're going through and experience it in their own way. Some some will be experiencing it in a really 3D way. And um, we can't force another to look through the lens that we look through or to see things from the same perspective that we do all we can do is love people for who they are and allow them all the space and the time that they need for their soul's perfect unfolding to occur. And on that note, I just want to pull a, a little card and I'm feeling really drawn to a card from the Water Alchemy Oracle today. And of course, as soon as I flip the pack over, it's the whirlpool card and this is all about standing your ground and holding your center and really like allowing yourself to like I said take no action until you know what action to take I actually want to read the um the message and I'm really drawn to the compass at the top of this card which is follow your own due north follow your own guidance um whether it's a master, a teacher, a guru, one of the things that I do for my clients is I clear their power of authority contracts. So whether it's a master, a teacher, a guru, a school, a religion, anywhere they've given their power away to somebody else outside of their own highest soul self, is that we claim back that power and clear those contracts. I'm very skeptical of any teacher who tells you what to do and how to live your life. You know, we can make suggestions, but it's all an invitation. So the message here is hold your ground. You may be being challenged by someone or something. I think we all are on a global scale. But this is not a time to play the victim. Call on your willpower to lovingly assert yourself. Doing inner work to integrate any unhealed parts of your shadow will reveal while this why this challenge has arisen. So you can imagine everything moving around you and you as this pillar or tower of strength in the middle and um, not allowing anyone to push you around or push you off your path and there's a little poem that I wrote this was years ago that I channeled when I was going through quite a challenging time with somebody who was trying to push me around <laughs> back in the day it was probably around 2016 and um, I got this very very clear message straight through from spirit and the words were hold Drop anchor in your center and let what will unfold. You are sovereign. You are gold. Stay the course. Hold firm. Don't fold. So there, never allow another person to take your power. Um, you know, it's you know what is best for you in any time, at any time, at any point. You will always have the answers you need within. Until those answers come, don't feel rushed to make a decision or jump onto a bandwagon or give your power away to someone or something outside of yourself. There is always beautiful guidance that comes from friends and colleagues and loved ones and you can go get all the readings that you want and they might answer your question but if you don't feel like that answer has arisen yet, allow yourself a little more time. Ask old father time to give you more time to... Uh, Explore all the possibilities before you allow that unfoldment to really come to light. It does feel to me like within each of us as individuals and within the collective, we're in the time of revelation and I feel like there's another layer of secrets all coming to light within each of us. And what the guides are saying is some of those secrets are secrets we've kept hidden from ourselves, like personal information about ourselves, about our own desires, about, you know, things that we maybe um, haven't uh, connected with that we may want but didn't know we wanted or things that we thought we wanted that we don't want. And we're going to have this whole switch up, flip a -roo thing going on as, as reality writes itself because so much has been reversed and inverted um, and, and almost used against us. So as reality writes itself, you, you, you may even feel, as I've said before, like you're going through a massive personality flip and you may feel like you're not the same person you used to be and so many of us are going through that. 
and where you might have been in resonance with someone maybe you're now turning and walking away from each other it's a bit like reverse magnets and just trust that your soul knows that your soul has the right directive for you and as the human part of you is catching up to your soul part of the flipperoo thing and the writing of reality is that we're now being really led by our higher self rather than being led by our human self the human self is having to allow the soul to lead a little bit more and this really is part of our our true natural blueprint and our divinity so on that note, um, I have been rambling on for quite some time. So on that note, I'm going to wish you a beautiful day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I don't have any hard and fast opinions on how others should live. So also please respect how I choose to live. And I'm sending you all loads of love. Mwah.